And so if you don't know who Lex Freeman, uh, I believe he, some PhD, he's an extremely smart guy, has his podcast, very intelligent guy. He's you interviewing the CEO, Sam Altman, of about GPT-4, I believe. I thought this video would be great for us to view on the topics of AI and the future. And so, yeah, let's get into it. Let's see, can you all hear it? Let me ask you about- Oh, let's turn that down. Hurt my ears. GPT-4. This and, is 25. And the ad is up, so I'm just going to pause that <laughs> real quick, get that off the screen. But yeah, um, so let me guys know in the comments if you feel like AI is going to be a threat to humanity, whether you feel like this stuff is, you can't get enough of this stuff, and we just need to just let it happen. I've heard people say that it might, AI might be dangerous to humanity. Um, but yeah, only time will truly tell what is the truth. So yeah, let's get back into it. Let me ask you about GPT-4. There's so many questions. Uh, first of all, also amazing. It's Looking back, it'll probably be this kind of historic pivotal moment with three, five, and four, which had GPT. Maybe five will be the pivotal moment. I don't know. <laughs> hard to say that looking forwards. We never know. That's the annoying thing about the future. It's hard to predict. But for me, looking back, GPT-4, Chad GPT is pretty damn impressive, like historically impressive. So allow me uh, to ask, what's been the most impressive capabilities of GPT-4 to you and GPT-4 Turbo? I think it kind of sucks. Hmm. Typical human also. Gotten it's, used to an awesome thing. No, I think it is an amazing thing. Um, but relative to where we need to get to and where I believe we will get to, uh, you know, at the time of like GPT-3, people were like, oh, this is amazing. This is this like marvel of technology. And it is. It was. Uh, but, you know, now we have GPT-4 and look at GPT-3 and you're like, that's unimaginably horrible. Um, I expect that the delta between 5 and 4 will be the same as between 4 and 3. And I think it is our job to live a few years in the future and remember that the tools we have now are going to kind of suck looking backwards at them. I agree. It's like, if you guys think about, and let me get a close-up on me, if you guys think that um, if you're a nerd and you play video games, I remember playing the Nintendo 64 and thinking like, man, these graphics look just like human beings. Like, this is amazing. And then when I go back and look at those graphics, I'm like, wow, this is trash. Like, I can't believe that I thought these were real human beings. And that shows the, the wonderlust, if that is the correct word, the wonderlust of technology where we feel like um, we feel technology is at the pinnacle, the greatest it's ever going to be, but in two years, it becomes a lot better than that. And so I think that's one of the main fears of AI, right? Like, what if it gets too fast? If, what if it gets too good too fast? And um, even in my software engineering work, like the things that I'm able to do in an hour is things that would take people months in the past. Like 20 years ago, there was no AWS. There was no uh, AI tool to generate the code for you. People had to write every single line and be responsible for millions and millions of different lines of code. And it was just way too much <laughs> for a single human being to be able to, to, to comprehend. And so that's one of the different um, issues with AI. Or I think one of the different problems with technology is that it grows way too fast. And that's how we make sure the future is better. What are the most glorious ways in that 
GPT-4 sucks. Meaning... Uh, what are the best things it can do? What are the best things it can do and the, the limits of those best things that allow you to say it sucks, therefore gives you inspiration and hope for the future. You know, one thing I've been using it for more recently is sort of a, like a brainstorming partner. Yep. And for that. there's a glimmer of something amazing in there. I don't think it gets, you know, when people talk about it, it what it does, they're like, oh, it helps me code more productively. It helps me write more faster and better. It helps me, you know, translate from this language to another. All these like amazing things, but there's something about the like kind of creative brainstorming partner. I need to come up with a name for this thing. I need to like think about this problem in a different way. I'm not sure what to do here. Uh, that I think like gives a glimpse of something I hope to see more of. Um, one of the other things that you can see like a very small glimpse of is when I can help on longer horizon tasks, you know, break down something into multiple steps, maybe like execute some of those steps, search the internet, write code, whatever, put that together. Uh, when that works, which is not very often, it's like very magical. The iterative back and forth with a human. Well, it works a lot for me. What do you mean? It uh, when, iterative back and forth with a human, it can get more often. When it can go do like a 10-step problem on its own. Oh. It doesn't work for that too often. Sometimes. At multiple layers of abstraction? Or do you mean just sequential? Both. Like, you know, to break it down and then do things at different layers of abstraction and put them together. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to like downplay the accomplishment of so yeah, it goes back to what we were just talking about, where the AI is not really able to plan like a human, diff like a human being, and foresee possible um, down situations, and that's kind of hard. Like how how do you teach a human being how to plan? I think that's that's a challenging question too. <laughs> like I think. For me as a software engineer, let me get a close up. For me as a software engineer, learning how to plan is something that is very critical towards my success. And I've had to fail a lot in order to experience, oh, okay, now that I've seen, you know, how bad a project can go, let me think in advance, you know, let me prepare for these certain situations ahead of time. And so, um, Chat GPT can't really like. How does it plan? Like, how do you give it data and teach it to plan uh, ahead of time with information that it's already figured out is false? That's pretty challenging. And very. It sounds complicated in my head, so I imagine it's even more complicated in the mathematical formulas. And so, yeah. Let's keep it. GPT four. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't want to overstate it either. And I think this point that we are on an exponential curve, we will look back relatively soon at GPT-4, like we look back at GPT-3 now. Okay, I made it to the end of the video, so I, I shouldn't have <laughs> So yeah, I like to talk a little bit ahead of time to make sure that I don't let the video play too long, but it's cool. And let's back to me. And so there you have it. You see chat GPT four. Thank you so much for watching the video to the entirety. Every single time you like, subscribe and comment, this really pushes the channel forward and helps us get to our goals. I really want to just say thank you. And if you are hating, it's all good. The hating helps too. peace.